I want to remind everybody that in order to participate, please raise your hand from Zoom um, or press star nine. You can also use the Q&A function at the bottom of your Zoom screen to put your questions in. So I want to welcome town, Amherst Town Clerk Shavina Martin to our chat today, um, as well as your town manager, Paul Bachelman. Shavina is in the throes of election, um, but also is the co-chair for the Amherst Complete Count Committee um, with myself and doing a lot of work around that. So before we launch into q and I'm gonna give Paul the chance to offer any updates he might have. Sure, thanks Brianna. Um, so there are two things that we're really focused on this week. One is the um, uh, FY21 budget, which is going through um, the finance committee at this point. Their finance committee will have met three times on the budget this week alone. Uh, their goal is to make a recommendation to the town council so the town council can consider the budget on Monday, July 20th. Um, a lot of interest in this budget, more than I've ever seen, and uh, a lot of um, comments and public comments, which has been very engaging. Uh, and um, so it's, it's really presented a lot of um, food for thought for the council as they start to consider it. So, and then the second thing has been the um, uh, welcoming back the students to from the university and the colleges. And I just was on a call with uh, representatives from all five colleges um, as they start to work through their plans and trying to make sure that everybody is coordinated and that the five colleges are communicating together, which they always do. Um, and talking about the impacts on the town, both through the business community and through the general public and the public health for the town. So those are the big focuses that we've been um, spending a lot of time on the last week since we since we last talked. All right, thanks for the, the update, Paul. I am gonna give um, Shavina a quick chance to just give a, an update with all of the things happening in her department right now, and then we're gonna launch into Q&A. So uh, take it away, Shavina. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. So here in the town clerk's office, we have a lot of new uh, and exciting things to report to everyone. Uh, as of J July 1st, we were able to launch our e-payments so now you're able to um, request the vital records, which are birth, death, and marriage certificates right online, pay form, and then it'll come to us electronically and we'll mail it out to you the next day. Um, and also you can now uh, renew your dog license right online as well. Same process, you can do it right from ePays, right from the town's homepage. And so we're excited about that. Many residents have already been utilizing it. So I'd like to encourage everyone to continue that. And then we are moving into our election season. And without holding up a lot of time, um, I just want to notify everyone that as of yesterday, the Secretary of State began, well, they began mailing out 2020 vote by mail applications. Uh, so anyone who would like to vote by mail can do so. No reason is required. Um, and all you have to do is fill out the application and send it back. It's pre-posted, you can see addresses right here in town hall. And then if you have any questions surrounding it, you can always give us a call. We're here Monday through Friday, 8 to 4 30 to answer those questions. Okay, thank you, Shavina. So we've got um, some questions here that we, we have on deck um, that involve just town clerk operations, election information, as well as census. I just want to remind everybody who's uh, joining us live to use the Q&A function to put your question to the room. Uh, although we would prefer if you raise your hand and came into the room and asked your question live, we'd love to hear from you. So that's always an option as well. So the first question I have kind of relates to some of the things Shavina just said. Um, we've gotten this question a couple times a week, I, ha I, can, I can attest to. Um, I wanna get married, how do I get that done now with, with town hall closed? So right now with town hall being closed, um, completing a marriage intention is a multi-step process. It requires um, both parties to be present uh, and there's a lot of documents that you have to fill out. And so right now uh, we are not processing marriage intentions. And the reason we're not doing it is just to minimize the exposure to possible contaminants um, or the virus. And the thing to know that I would like everyone to know is that 
uh, in the state of Massachusetts, you can complete the marriage intentions with any community um, because you're getting married in the state. So you don't have to file your intentions in the town where you're going to have your uh, marriage ceremony. Hmm, I didn't know that. I got my marriage license from the town of Amherst, so I have fond memories of that. Um, now we have a question from the room. Uh, Sarah asks, um, you may receive thousands of ballots by mail. Will you need additional volunteers to handle these? That's an awesome question. We will, and we do have, we've always had our, um, our election worker uh, job posting up on the town website. Anyone who is interested um, and anyone who is healthy, um, I am encouraging to go on and fill out the application and then those get uh, sent right over to me and we will begin reviewing all of those. We've had about eight people already um, apply and the Secretary of State is also doing a big push. So if you are interested, please apply. It is that application on our career portal? It is. Okay. And that web address is uh, amersma.gov slash jobs, where you can find that and all of our other current job postings as well. Um, so I have um, a question here. Is it too late to answer my census? Um, the, e the quick and easy answer, I guess I'll take, I'll take that one, is no, it's not too late. You can um, still answer online by mail or by phone. Um, several different options there. It's not too late. However, um, for those who have not responded, there will be census workers, enumerators coming out in the community um, following uh, safety protocols with masks and whatnot starting August 11th. So if you'd prefer not to have a visitor at your door um, while they are gonna be practicing safe protocols, it's probably a good, um, good time to answer if you haven't yet so that you can um, not show up on that list of non-response. And that's gonna start here on August 11th. Um, and so you'll start seeing people um, with identification. They will have census badges. Um, they will not ask to enter your home. They will not um, ask any of those types of questions about social security numbers or anything like that. They're gonna be simply asking the questions that are on the questionnaire. So. Please don't give out any of that information. If you have concerns about that, you can, you can definitely let us know. And we have another question that kind of was a follow-up to that. And um, this has been a big, uh, a big topic of conversation for us. I'm a student and, and got sent home due to COVID. Where do I count? Do my parents count me? That's a question we get, we get a lot. Um, know your parents should not count you if you live in Amherst for the majority of the year. Um, and if you split your time equally, it's where you live on April 1st. However, this year that's a little different and the, the census clarified that you should be counted where you live when you're at school. Uh, so for those students who lived on campus, you have been counted by your university. And for those who lived who live or lived off campus or are coming back into off-campus housing, you should be counted where you live um, when you live at school. If that's Amherst, then you would get counted here in Amherst. All right, so I've got another question. Um, if we served as election workers in the past, do we need to reapply for this fall? You do not. We will begin, um, the, everyone here in the office, we're gonna start reviewing all of our election workers uh, next week. Um, many have already notified us if they are available, if they're unavailable. But if you worked last year, um, or if you worked for the March 3rd presidential primary, um, then you're already considered on our active list. And so you'll get a notification. All right, thank you. I, I've got this question too here that I have probably gotten at least 20 times since um, the, the building's been closed to the public. So they, this person needs to get something notarized, but everywhere seems closed. Does the clerk's office do this during this time or is there a recommendation of where they can get this done? We have not been performing our notary service and I do know that uh, the banks have been doing it. So any of our community banks in the area in town have been doing them um, and some attorney's offices have been doing them as well. 
Um, we get that question a lot as well because anyone who um, has to renew their business certificate this year, it requires um, a notary seal. Okay, thank you. This question um, kind of references the, the, the mailing that you mentioned a little bit earlier. Is everyone getting mailed a ballot now? Does, do I still need to ask for an absentee, absentee ballot separately? So just to clarify, it's not a ballot that everyone is going to receive. It's a request for an absentee or early voting ballot that every registered voter in the state will receive. And so you won't get a ballot unless you return that form requesting a ballot. And you can fill that form out for the whole year, or if you want just the ballot for the September 1st primary, you can indicate that on the form. Um, if you want one just for the November 3rd um, election, you can indicate that as well. Also, if you are an independent or what we call in the state of Massachusetts an unenrolled voter, there will be directions on how to choose which ballot you want for September uh, because you have to choose. Hey, Shavina, what's the difference between early voting and absentee voting, and how would I know which one I want to use? This year, well, okay, so it's, that's, that's a great question. So, um, historically, an absentee uh, ballot is a ballot that you cast because you're not going to be, you're requested because you're not going to be available on election day, whether it's your way, and you don't, you're not required to give a reason, you can, or if you're not, you're just not going to. Um, early voting just allows you the ability to cast your vote in advance of election day. This year, when the legislation that Governor Baker passed uh, and signed on July 6th, you need no reason. And the ballot actually says both. So the ballot says absentee and early vote. So this year, it's kind of the same. Um, okay. Typically, you would need a reason. Um, in the past, if someone was admitted in the hospital um, right before, I think it was 48 hours before, or 75 days before the election, we could have um, we could have a relative bring a ballot to the hospital um, if they're admitted. And those um, those laws have been relaxed this year. And so, these are temporary changes. Sorry. Yeah. So so if I want to if I get this thing in the mail and I want to vote and not have to go to the polls, I just say yes. Give me something. Give me either one. It doesn't really matter. And you'll send them the same. It'll be whether I ask for absentee or early voting, I'll get the same packet from you. Yes. So Got how it. you'll do it, it's going to be, it'll be pre-populated. The application is going to be pre-populated with your name, your address. And if you have a mailing address um, with us, then your mailing address. And you can indicate where you'd like to have your ballot mailed. And then um, it'll have your birth date, I mean your year, not your birth date, but just your year of birth on there. So like for me, it'll have 1979. And then you just sign it and mail it back. So um, then the, um, and can at the same time, I think you said this, and maybe I wasn't listening clear, clearly, I can ask for both the September primary and the November general election at the same time. I'm not going to get correct. a second mailing. Great. That is correct. Now that's really important to clarify those things. I think there's been a lot of confusion in, in the media and even locally mm -hmm. that people would be just automatically getting getting a ballot. So right, it's not a ballot. You're getting a invitation to ask for a ballot. Mm -hmm. Correct. That's good to understand that. All right. Now I've got a um, another question coming in. I'm moving to Amherst in two weeks. How do I update my voting address? Do I have to come into town hall? So there's a number of ways you can do it. You can do it right online on the Secretary of State website, and that comes over to us electronically. Or you can contact our office, and we can mail you out a hard copy form. In order for there to be any changes to anyone's voter profile, your signature is required. And what's the deadline for the, the next election in order to be registered to vote or to update your mm -hmm. um, registration? The legislation changed that. So originally, it was going to be uh, August 12th, which is why we were going to collaborate and do a big uh, thing with the census, which, you know, we know census day was going to be August 11th. That's now been moved to August 22nd, which is a Saturday. August 22nd, 2-2, two, two, is that what you said? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yep, 2-2. Two, two. So 8-2-2, 2020. For, to red, last day to register to vote for the primary? Yep, for September 1st. Okay. Mm -hmm. Another another census question here. Is that that's a Saturday, right? It is a Saturday. That's also oh. the first day of early voting in person. 
Oh my gosh. <laughs> Town clerk's office never sleeps. Oh my God, you guys. It's going to be a long time. It's going to be a long, yep. long time. Send them lots of love and, and <laughs> coffee. Uh, I'm going to pivot real quick to another census question. Mm -hmm. And I've, I've yeah. actually got this a, a bunch of times and I just got clarification on this um, from them a couple of days ago. So um, someone asks, I made a mistake and I didn't count my youngest child on my census. What do I do? And that's a really good question. Um, so I did get clarity on that, at least for um, a solution for people who respond online was to go right back into the, um, the 2020, whoops, this way, 2020 census.gov <laughs> um, and start another questionnaire with your, with your address and your information. And um, they will knock out your other response and take the, the newer response. So if you failed to count a newborn, for example, or one of your younger children, which actually happens uh, quite frequently, it's a huge concern nationally, but also in Amherst has been designated as being at a high to very high risk for undercounting our youngest children. So um, if you did answer and you forgot, you can go back in. If you haven't answered yet, be sure to count everybody in your household, even if it's, um, if you're not the parent of the child, but they're living there predominantly with you, they still count. Um, so we, we're doing a lot of programming as the complete count committee, um, targeting um, families with young children um, starting Friday and for the rest of the summer, the Amherst Complete Count Committee is sponsoring additional meals on Fridays through the schools in collaboration with the school's meal distribution. So they'll be getting additional meals um, to go home for over the weekend and the meals will have stickers and information similar to what you can see behind my head um, in different languages and those will be affixed to the meals to just prompt and remind and give uh, the web address for people to answer and we have other programming um, also coming out uh, tailored at families with young children and hopefully um, off-campus students as well it looks like i have another question here in the room uh, another voting question so if there is in per if there is in-person early voting, where will that happen? That information will be revealed uh, in the weeks to come. And for, we're working for, on that. And once that's ready, we will have that pretty prominently on our homepage. Um, also, there's a voting page, amherstma.gov slash vote, where we'll have everything that you do need to know. We'll put that out there once we have um, the details. So, and just to put that in context, I think it's a complex um, question that Shavina has been managing with our talking to public health, public safety folks in terms of whether it can be inside, has to, whether it's going to be intense outside, where's a good location for, to manage traffic. So, um, it, multiple locations are being examined, but we need, we'll be settling on that pretty soon. And I just want to remind the people who might have just joined us, um, please feel free to put your questions in the Q&A, raise your hand via Zoom or star nine for those of you who are calling in. We'd love to hear your voice. Um, I'm tired of hearing my voice, so please feel free to <laughs> pop in. Um, otherwise, while we wait for um, another question to come in, I've got some more here. Um, this one kind of, hopefully we, we've touched on, but I'm living in another state now, but I need access to my birth records. How can I do this? Okay, so uh, you can do it a number of ways. You can use our ePay uh, online. When people are out of, when you're uh, an out of state resident, I always ask you to call us first, just to ensure we have your record. Um, if you go online and you just request it and you pay for it, it's a multi-step process to refund your money if we don't have your record. So give us a call first. So we can locate your record and then um, then you can request it either by mail or through the uh, ePay system. And, and the same goes for um, death records and uh, copies of marriage certificates as well as should be yeah, all explained. Yeah, they're all uh, they're all up there and online amersonmay.gov right. slash payments, or if you hit our homepage, there's a, a big button that says e-payments. Um, and we've been steadily adding different categories to that with more to come. So uh, feel free to check that out. Yes, yeah, so that, that's been a really great initiative that Brianna really 
worked led and and with the and the pandemic actually drove us say we got to move on this right now and make it easier for people to access our services electronically so it's great work on that Absolutely. And, and I think that one of the first times I met Shavina and we talked, she said, let's get all this stuff online. <laughs> and of course, things take a little longer and I'm glad we got it done. But she came in with wanting that to be uh, to improve her services for the community. So I have to I have to say that. OK, I've got a question here that's directed towards Paul. Paul, does the university seem responsive to the concerns you outlined in your letter? Uh, we have not heard a response back from the university at this point in time. Um, I think they, uh, this, the concerns that were expressed in that letter are shared by lots of people in the community and um, they take them very seriously, I know. And I think they're trying to figure out uh, um, how to address them. The scale that they're talking about, the, the you know, thousands of students in terms of testing and protocols um, is is pretty gigantic, um, but they have a lot of resources at their disposal as well. So I expect that they will be addressing them at some point in the future. And, and will, um, when, when they do get addressed, is that something that we will make available? Um, it depends how they want it. You know, if they, you know, we've asked for a number of things, actions on their part, and even just a meeting basically. And, um, and so it's, it's at a fairly high level. And so that's mm -hmm. what we're waiting to do, to hear from. And you, and you mentioned this, but I will echo the fact that there has been a lot of um, activity and conversation through our multiple different channels from the community members expressing opinions and concerns about that. So we, we hope to keep everybody, um, people's comments in, in mind and to keep the information flowing, but feel free to reach out to us if there's yeah, I mean, something. One thing we should all expect is with when, when the university and the college is open that there will be an increase in COVID-19 cases because they will be doing a lot of testing. They really, I think their intent, at least for on-campus students is to test twice a week. Um, so they will be doing a lot of testing. We know a lot of young people are asymptomatic uh, and those cases will be recorded. So people should expect to see an increase um, in cases in Amherst we need to sort of gauge what should, what's the expected increase, what that should look like, so we can inform the public to say, yeah, this is in, within the norms of what we expect. So the one thing we have that's really good is that our their public health officials, and, and in a lot of ways, UMass is its own entity in terms of handling uh, cases. They they manage their, the cases, cases on campus are managed by the university. Um, and then the cases in Amherst are managed by the Amherst Public Health Department. So, but there's a lot of um, communication between the two health, health departments. So that's a really good thing for us. Yeah, absolutely. I'm gonna ask one more um, census question that I've gotten. Um, I can't even count how many times, but basically is my data safe? Um, are my responses safe? And I think we can come at this from a couple of different lenses in our community primarily um, people can have a, a mistrust of of government or the administration and don't feel comfortable sharing their information or are concerned about an immigration or a citizenship status um, on the other hand of that we have many off-campus students who um, may have more than four people living in, in a unit so there's concern about that um, but by law, the Census Bureau cannot release any of identifiable information about you, your home, your business, even, even to law enforcement agencies. Um, they certainly can't release that to the, to the town um, and we wouldn't be looking for that. So in the case for students living off campus, they should feel confident to answer if there are five people living in your unit, um, even though that is not technically allowed in our town uh, due, to, due to zoning, information, we will not be seeking that information, we will not get that information, so we encourage people to answer as accurately as possible and make sure everybody is counted. Um, and that that's protected under uh, Title 13 in, in federal law. So it's not something we're seeking to do, and even if we were, we wouldn't be able to access that. Um, that might not alleviate everybody's concerns about privacy and data, but it is certainly something um, to mention that it, it's very protected information. Um, so hopefully that helps some people feel better about answering. And, and we've, we've spoken a lot about 
you know, we want to get a complete count and we need, we need this, but uh, it's really, we didn't talk so much about why we need it. And I'll just say quickly, um, as far as Amherst is concerned, um, it's really about representation um, in, our, in our House of Rep Representatives, making sure we're adequately uh, represented. We did lose a seat in Massachusetts based off of the census response in 2010. Um, so we don't want that to happen, of course. And it really is about funding for almost everything in our community, schools, roads, um, grant programs, federal funding. It's, it's going to impact us for the next 10 years, and we will, we will feel it if we're, we're undercounted. So that's my spiel on that one. Uh, we are coming up close to our time, so I'm going to say one more time to the room to please pop in if you have a question or a comment. Um, you can use Q&A raise your hand or star nine from the phone. Um, so while we give people another chance, are there any things, Shavina, that you wanted to share that you didn't get asked directly today? Um, there will be, we will be putting out a lot of information that'll be forthcoming in the weeks to come surrounding elections. So I just would like to encourage everyone to, um, you know, stay tuned. We're gonna probably we're gonna put it in all the news media outlets up on our website and things like that. Um, and it's one of my um, desires is to keep all of our residents well informed, um, and that way you all can have um, confident conversations and be well informed and make um, good decisions. Um, and I try to give you the information as soon as it becomes. And I, I'll mention too that we just put up on our, our social media channels on Facebook and Twitter and we'll add it to our YouTube channel, but um, Shavina did a great informational video about uh, voting in the 2020 election with Dr. Demetria Shabazz. Um, so that video is out there. So feel free to check that out if you wanted to get some additional info and resources. All right, I don't see any other questions from the room. Paul, did you have any last um, pieces you wanted to share before we close no, up? I, th I think we're good to go on this. Thank you. All right. Thank you, everybody. Um, we'll see you next week. And if you have follow-up questions, please email us at info at amherstma.gov and we will get you the information that you need. Thank you, Shavina. Yeah. You're thanks, welcome. Shavina. Bye, see ya. Thank you, Bye, guys. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye.